there's no pain. Okay. No, how long has it, how long has it been? The, oh, the period of the, time? Three years. Three years. Three years. So the first treatment to the cancer coming back, how long did it take before it came back? Uh, it, it, it took two and a half years. Two and a half years. Yeah. Are you concerned now that it could come back? Uh, you see, my belief is that uh, things are okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I believe that I'm okay, I'm cured. Uh, and until, uh, uh, until I'm told by the doctors that I'm not okay. Okay. Through their clinics that uh, I'm told to attend. So but with me, my body, with me, I'm okay. Mm -hmm. My body feels okay, comfortable. And uh, I'm swearing well, I'm uh, eating everything that I'm told to eat. I'm told to eat everything. Now, there's no food, specific food I have to eat. And uh, I start, that's why I feel I'm okay. So do you still go for checkups? Yes. How often? Uh, like now, I'm going in December mm -hmm. 10. Uh, that's after one month. After, so every month you go for a checkup? Yeah. And in this uh, period, perhaps we just come back to you. What are you checking for? Are you still monitoring to see if it's come back every month? Um, I mean, Peterson has done tremendously well. Three years for esophagus cancer. We thank God. And he's a strong person. Um, so when they come to us, we really do clinical evaluation. Mm -hmm. And it's the patient to direct us, depending on the symptoms. We do imaging, not necessarily every month. If the patient has no major complaints, we don't do tests every month, but we do clinical evaluation. And maybe after three to six months, we do uh, an X-ray, like a barium swallow. We can also do a CT scan to check the commonest places this cancer can spread to. So you say he's lucky because it kills. It's a killer disease. It's one among the top 10 killers. I mean, in men is number two. In women is number three. Why in men is it higher in terms of killing? I think it's the lifestyle in terms of alcohol and tobacco use. Mm -hmm. yeah, our men smoke more than the women. Um, and in women, really, it's the cervix and breast which take lead. And that's, you hear stories about cervix and breast and hardly about esophagus. Okay. But it's coming third. So, Dr. Kirimi, to viewers who are watching right now, <coughs> what is it that they need to know that's most important? Maybe some that missed the feature that ran earlier in terms of catching this. Because what we're hearing from Dr. Nyongesa is that the challenge she sees most is that uh, they come in late, these patients. So what is it that must uh, be looked at very carefully by everybody? Okay, I must agree with Dr. Nyongesa. Unfortunately, unlike other cancers, like the cervix or the breast that is an external organ, so if there's a swelling, you could actually feel it, or uh, uh, the cervix where we have screening tests like pap smears. Unfortunately, for cancer of the esophagus, there isn't one test we can do to screen, to keep screening even before symptoms show up, you know, like the way we keep doing pap smears and mammograms. So it is more of people recognizing the symptoms early. And these are? This would be first persistent continuous heartburn, two regurgitation, um, you know, this feeling like food is coming back up three difficulty in swallowing that is progressive. Initially, it is just solid food, feeling like food is stuck in the throat. Uh, three, unexplained weight, weight loss. Mm -hmm. the, you're not dieting. It's not that you're doing any extra exercise, but you're actually wasting. It's more of like body wasting. Mm -hmm. It's not even losing weight. Mm -hmm. It's just unexplained, drastic weight loss. Um, as I had said earlier, vomiting out fresh blood yeah. okay. or passing out stool that is um, dark colored because of probably swallowing blood from the tumor and it undergoing all the digestive processes. All right. The other thing would probably be to educate people about the risk factors. Some of the things that can actually be prevented to reduce, you know, there's no one known cause of cancer of the esophagus, but there are risk factors. One of them has already been alluded to, cigar I mean, um, tobacco, smoking. whether you're smoking cigarettes, cigars, or chewing it, alcohol. Shisha? Shisha, which is a form of just flavored uh, tobacco. So any tobacco product. Alcohol. Another risk factor would be obesity, because with obesity, we find 
most obese people will tend to have the problem of regurgitation you know the contents of the stomach keeping on coming up and the contents of the stomach usually have acid so that constant irritation of the esophagus is a risk factor um, the other thing is we know people who've had cancers of, for example, the breast or anywhere else of the head and neck who've undergone radiotherapy mm -hmm. may also be at a higher risk of developing these cancers. All right. And if you've ever had a family member who has had cancer of the esophagus, then it would advise you, you to keep going for checkups because right. it also does run in families. in families. Our time is up, but quickly from you, Peterson, this must have cost you a lot, has it? Yeah. dented your pocket because this is a lot of treatment I'm hearing and that you still constantly have to go for this screening. It's an expensive affair. Would you say that? Yes. Okay. What do you tell a person who has perhaps uh, been treated, they've survived, in terms of if it may come back or how they need to now live their lives? Uh, we advise that the ones who do not fear and uh, to be courageous mm -hmm. and uh, so we believe that life should continue uh, because doctors are embraced to treatment, uh, to high standards of treatment. And uh, of course, as a man, we say doctors are second to God. So we like to believe mm -hmm. that one will cure then uh, life will be there.